Good afternoon YouTubers, uh, welcome back to Bagger Inklers and uh, Eleona. So, part two of the downstairs hacks. Hopefully everyone enjoyed part one. Uh, just going to go through a number of other bits, uh, to be fair, what I thought about after putting the first video together. Um, thought about um, what else I've got on the boat um, to show you. So One of the first things that I did is identify a complete lack of power on a sailing boat for modern day mobile life. I managed to salvage one of these out of one of the cars that I had in the past, the 12 volt extension lead drilled a hole in the bottom of this console box that's where i've got my instruments ran ran the power it runs all the way back behind the chart table uh, behind that bookshelf in there um, behind this panel and i've wired it into this one using the appropriate gauge wire that means it's connected to the breaker and uh, when i turn the appropriate breaker on everything lights up got some of these low profile uh, little usb 2 amp chargers nice and cheap but perfect for the boat so for the next bit i uh, thought i'd show you a couple of the charge leads you'll need quite a few on these on board especially if you've got kids and various devices need charging mainly over USB so all good for uh, the extension that I've just showed you these leads are quite swish they were being advertised on Facebook actually where I saw them I think they were a Kickstarter at the time so they actually connect they do various lengths but they connect together just so that you can keep keep them neat and tidy but you've got uh, USB, that's normal USB, USB-C in one end, so USB-C and normal USB in one end, and then USB-C plus uh, Lightning, Apple Lightning connector, and that connector will also do micro USB as well so android devices apple devices um, apple iphone for instance and new ipad connectivity all in one lead very useful worth having a couple on board so that you've got as much of an option as you need i think i said last time on part one um, i've also got uh, a wired 2 amp connector up in the master cabin as well so I can charge my iPad overnight. So that's the power. I'll show you where the um, 12 volt is up in the master cabin. So there you can see the USB connector in the wall. Simple, drill a hole, add that. I went over that in, the, uh, in part one. One of the products that I found is amazing on the boat. It is expensive but I think it's worth it are uh, RAM mounts so RAM is the company uh, effectively they supply uh, a, a myriad of different connectors but it's all based on a hard physical point which can be mounted this is a um, suction cup with one of these little one inch balls now the way this works if I can show you um, with one hand is that's the connect or oh, that's the iPad holder so that's for a new generation iPad Pro and um, you can connect to the back a number of different configurations and then you get these little connectors now you can get short ones like that Or you can get longer ones like this and you can connect these arms together to effectively create an articulated uh, tripod 
you connect that to there. So doing this one-handed. The little balls are um, rubber coated. So once you have it on here, um, it's incredibly stiff and holds very well. Um, so you can connect that like that. So uh, for this configuration, this is uh, us using iPad while in in bed so movie night get some movies on your ipad you can sit there watching them quite quite cool alongside that though i've also got the waterproof case for my ipad um, obviously cases are specific to devices what i use this for i've got another one of these sucker mounts you don't have to buy separate ones um, obviously but that connects onto there, connects onto there, and I have a waterproof case for the pad. If I take that, connect there, I can then come up. That allows me to use Navionics on my iPad, even if it's raining without any issues whatsoever. Ram, great product, quite expensive. I personally think worth it. Very resistant to seawater as well. I've not had anything go rusty, so they're obviously using high grade stainless where needed. It just works. Um, and as you can see there, very good for putting devices around the boat. Most boats have a nice shiny surface somewhere or other. So works very well. As we're here in the master cabin, something I didn't show you last time, the bed. We spend a reasonable amount of time on board. Lots of people get on with the foam mattresses you get on boats. If you're gonna spend any money for comfort downstairs, and this isn't a cost saving, um, it's comfort saving, definitely recommend uh, going to one of the bespoke mattress manufacturers and getting a, a bespoke mattress made. We, I'll give the link uh, below um, for a number of these products, but I will um, I will recommend the company that we bought this from. The, the service was amazing. The, uh, the, the actual owner of the company, because he was uh, down in Plymouth, came and offered to template uh, the mattress um, for me. You can do it yourself, and there are instructions on all those um, company websites on how to template it. But he came and uh, did that uh, for me, um, no extra charge, and got the mattress made. I think it was about £800, so very expensive much more than a, a mattress that you buy uh, for your home bed this is just just smaller than a double and um, but <coughs> it's <coughs> as you can see here full pocket sprung mattress nice and deep it's actually shaped to the contour of this bed with that 800 comes uh one of these mesh devices, which actually sits underneath the mattress, allows air to get under it, just to stop stop things going mouldy. Definitely worth it. One of the best investments on this boat, I, I would consider. Because we've got the humidifier on board all the time, we leave the boat ready to go, uh, beds made, we can just spend uh, the night on, night on the boat, as and when. Next few, really simple, but, uh, if you've got pets on board, dogs or cats, I suppose. If you've got pets on board, uh, the wooden steps do get slippery. They're obviously wide. They're, they're deeper than a standard staircase. So especially if you've got a small dog, it's quite difficult for them to, to grip on wooden steps um, or plastic. What I've done, this is actually a, a waterproof, water-resistant, washable, rubber-backed, got these little studs on here, carpet. Very cheap, I, I, 
cost me about 10 quid on eBay uh, for, a, for a length of it. I had done uh, the aft cabin and the forward cabin in this carpet prior to us uh, changing some carpet at home. But all I've done, cut it out, um, make it look nice. A couple of press studs just to stop it moving. That sits there. That allows the dog uh, easy access up and down uh, without them slipping. To be fair, it does also capture quite a lot of dirt and dust that might be on your shoes. Saves it, bring, bring it into the cabin. Similar vein, kind of a new addition is that little mat there. Incredibly simple, uh, ridiculous hack. So this is a standard bath mat. It's a small bath mat, so it fits in here. Aesthetically quite pleasing. Keeps your feet off of the plastic gel coat when it's cold, so it keeps your feet warm if you're um, having a sit. But that was uh, found by my wife in Poundland or Pound Stretcher, and it didn't even cost a pound. That little bath mat was 50p. So ridiculously cheap hack just to keep your feet warm and it keeps the head foot area nice and clean as well. Easy to just take home and stick in the washing machine. That's the carpet on the steps. Uh, we'll discuss the carpet in the cabins again. Go back into the how to playlist, have a look at part one. You'll hear all about that. Um, carpet in the heads, carpet, bath mat. Uh, 50p, really cheap. And the last piece of hackery I'll go through is a really simple one. I don't know if that many people do it, but I think it saves us a lot of comfort on board, um, is when you fill up your water tanks, do you purify them? I know lots of people do, but depends on what you use. So um, there is a product on the market Again, I, I'm not associated with any of these, um, but we find this works really well. So product called Aquasol. Uh, it's a complete water treatment, as it says. It does what it says on the bottle. This in Chandleries, it's reasonably pricey. I uh, don't know, it's about nine, 10 pound per bottle. Uh, the bottle will last you quite a while. However, you can find this on eBay. Don't know whether it's on Amazon. But you can buy it in bulk as well so you can buy it with eight or six um, bottle case works out cheaper comes down to about six seven pound a bottle you'll get through depends how much time you spend on the boat to be fair um, one of these last four or five tank refills it's quite interesting because they use the cap so the instructions i don't know if you can read that instructions for use on the back um, so it's cap full for every 25 litres of water. So that's 10 mil for every 25 litres in the tank. Most marinas just have a, t a hose and then you've got to work out how many capfuls. My solution to that, really simply, and this is not rocket science, is I basically run two tanks, one at a time. So when one tank's empty, a, I know that I'm half full of water. I know the tanks are roughly 130 litres each. So 130 litres divided by 25 to give you the number of capfuls. And then all I did was buy an empty plastic jar. Uh, this is designed for um, toiletries uh, when you're going abroad. I then basically measured the contents and drew a line on the outside of the bottle with a sharpie. I fill up to that line from that bottle quite simply. Every time I fill the tank I then just empty the whole of that into the tank. Wait till the other tank's empty, switch the manifold over and then come back fill up. Obviously that's good if you've got a constant supply of water. It works for us in the UK sailing weekends um, and weeks um, but it means that the tanks always stay clean the water's always good to drink and you can't taste any of that 
and um, it's a, effectively it's a chlorination and silver nitrate treatment so it keeps the bacteria out of the tank another good thing about this is you can dose the tanks so once every couple of years I'll do a complete clean where a whole bottle of this goes into one tank you fill the tank up you leave it there for 24 hours and then drain the whole thing and that's good removes all the bacteria and viruses in the tank and you're good to go for the next season so someone on viewing part one um, basically gave me a good hack as well um, I have done it not to the extent that he did and if I can find his name I'll give him a shout out uh, in the in the video edit uh, unfortunately I can't find the comment that he placed on um, the first video but he did say that one of the things that he did was replace the head unit so most boats come with a radio uh, it's normally a, a bit of a naff cheap uh, car head unit type touch um, unless you obviously spec um, a, a proper marine system but he's replaced the head unit with a 10 inch um, screen from a car so it's a um, it's a car head unit with Android and he's basically saying that you can get Navionics on that so you can actually use it as a backup chart plotter if you really need to as long as it's somewhere convenient but here you can see my head unit um, I replaced that um, main reason the original I think the original was a tape unit actually so very old uh, this is CD player bring it up to a little bit de modern day but it's also got Bluetooth great for music f streaming from your phone um, again at 50 pounds 60 pound uh, just quickly change it over you might need to change the wiring harness uh, on the radio but really simple um, and gets you more comfortable on the boat listening to music there we go part two Bit of a quick video hopefully um, a number of quick things I, I don't know I might even come up with a part three at some point if I remember other things that I've changed um, I still need to do uh, the light switches I told you about last time so that's how to get red and white out of a really cheap switch really cheap hack um, on that switch and some RGB LED strip so I will do that and I'll probably also go through um, a grab bag at some point uh, not that it's particularly offshore centric I've just got things in a grab bag just in case I've needed it and hopefully never will part two of downstairs hacks again like subscribe share share to your heart's content um, it'll help me out I'm, I'm trying to build this channel uh, try and get some people interested if you have if you're looking at the other videos you'll see Lola the sea dog she's yet to actually be on the boat when it's moving so that's going to be interesting she's a bit of a nutcase so we just need to make sure she doesn't jump off and um, there's also a couple of vlogs that I've done on there when I was on on the boat with my son uh, a bit of a catch and cook and even that's a bit of a how-to on how to fillet fish for when we when we cook them luckily he's the fish fishing person I go fishing, he goes catching, it would seem. That's it, end of part two. As I say, hopefully there'll be a part three. And I will get back to you soon. Bag your wrinklers out.